example, you have to have the personal experience of something to worship. And this is what has been lacking. I mean, what the churches are peddling is high abstraction, and you really have to work yourself up into a lather to, uh, you know, be able to accept that as, as worthy of that kind of attention. The, the psychedelic... Uh, subset of society is into an experience and you know it's accessible in a way we're like Calvinists not in our ethics or our restraint on behavior but in our insistence on a direct personal relationship with the mystery and uh, this is something very new we have really accepted the idea that Truth descends through hierarchies, basically from Newsweek and Time and the Washington Post down to us as consumers of uh, these various images of what is going on. The notion that you might know more about reality than the combined editorial uh, board of Scientific American and the Journal of Foreign Affairs is uh, startling stuff. We always give ourselves away. We don't realize it depends on you. To believe that at Cornell or down at SRI, people understand the universe is not helpful. You must understand the universe. And if you don't know partial differential calculus, then your model of how the universe works must do it without partial differential calculus. In other words, it's not read anywhere that only one model will work. And in fact, I think all abstract models should be highly suspect. It's going to be, it, it's, a, it's an opportunity. I mean, we have to view life as an opportunity. What are you doing with it? Are you afraid of it? I mean, some people live their lives Apparently, what they are doing is arranging their deathbed scene. They want it to take place in a large baronial house with clipped green lawns, acres in surround. They want uh, the room in which they die to be filled with fine art. They want their loving heirs to be dutifully assembled while they pass out the final wisdom. And they spend their entire life creating the dramatic scenario of their passage. And of course, you have to work hard. You've got to make the money to buy that house. You have to uh, hire all these children, educate them into your values so they won't be stabbing you in the back and misbehaving in this situation. Uh, you have to create loyalty, possession power, all of these things, and then you won't die in a ditch, unknown and abandoned, you know? But on the other hand, what was the quality of that life, you know? Life is an opportunity. How much pressure should you put on it? How many places should you go? How many drugs should you take? How many sexual configurations should you experiment with? How many professions should you? And it depends, I think, the question is, how seriously do you take it? Do you just think life is a lark and it's fine with you that you're going to go into a pine box and be forgotten for all eternity? Or do you have some inner consolation that that won't happen and you're going to go off and be with uh, Lao Tzu and Mao and everybody else who ever died? Or, you know, just what is it? And my, I think of it as uh, a telephone booth being filled with water. And you can see that when the water reaches the top of the telephone booth, you're going to be dead as a doornail. And so you have 30 years to figure it out. We are alive. There's no contest about that. It's extremely improbable that we should be alive, that we should be here thinking, feeling, sharing. The fact that we're alive throws open the whole game. It means anything is probably possible. But I doubt that it's easy. I'll bet you have to be very, very smart to figure out what's going on and get it right. And so I guess I have a sort of private religion of intelligence. It isn't how good you are, it's how wily you are. <laughs>
which was the Greek virtue of Odysseus, you know, that was always his epithet, was uh, he was wily Ulysses. Reality is some kind of maze. It isn't to the swift that the race goes, it's to the thought.